Hey everybody, Edo here, and about a year ago I reviewed Hero Realms, and we now have the Rune of Thandar campaign deck. This was backer selected, uh, but the folks at um, White Wizard Games did send along some extra stuff that I needed. I had the original um, game, which, which is what I reviewed, uh, but for playing this campaign, which is cooperative, you need the base game. You also need the character decks like the wizard, fighter, cleric, etc., which are like booster packs uh, with character-specific stuff, and uh, then the the campaign game. And so had an opportunity to, to bring that all together. They also gave me some some boss boosters, but I didn't I didn't use those. And so if you're not familiar with Hero Realms, Hero Realms is a fantastic lightweight deck builder game, sort of the quintessential small form deck builder with Star Realms and Hill Realms. I mean, they've, they've sort of taken over and they've, they've nailed it. Um, <clears throat> my, uh, you can't play, this is sort of like, this is really targeted at expert Hero Realms players. Now, actually, you can learn and play it together, but there's no reason you wouldn't like get Hero Realms, check it out, get the character boosters, check them out, and then pick this up. So I'm not gonna like go and re-explain Hero Realms, I'll link my previous review, so you can check that out if you're not familiar with the game at all. But so, um, this is a lot of content in a small box. I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by it. I mean, it's it's cards, right? But from a gameplay perspective, the way this works is it's now cooperative, and uh, all the players are set up with the um, standard market in front of them, like in Hero Realms, and you have your character cards, if you're not familiar with them, if you're the cleric, rather than just your sort of generic starting cards, starting deck of 10, you have the cleric's deck of 10, and you have cleric champions and cleric spell, you know, so it's just like all balanced to each. The thief has a lot of money to start with, which I found out. So you have a lot of different sort of um, uniqueness in your starting pack, but then otherwise it's the same market phase. Um, you, this actually comes with replacement cards for those, for the campaign style of play, and those get swapped out, and then they're good forever. Um, but so that's basically the setup for the players, but then you have the boss. So there's a series of bosses and encounters and they're all double-sided. Uh, I don't wanna reveal them all because it's a linear story. You're, you're playing through narrative, but you're gonna have a starting boss. Uh, that boss has a deck uh, and has hit points. Uh, and then you have the market laid out in front. And basically there is the adventure book, which is this one. And this is a campaign style book. You're gonna open it up and you're gonna, one player, whoever, is gonna read it and lay out the scene of what's happening and what the story is. And so there's a unique setup they're gonna work out and put it down and then they're gonna set it up. Now, there's a, this is a hard game. This is not simple, not easy. So there's even some ways you can soften it up, letting players go more first before the monster gets in and other things you can do. Um, but you're gonna work through the setup and the story. One other thing that's important in setup is there are these mastery uh, tokens. These get put in into the, the deck of the uh, bad guy, sort of like you would in Pandemic, where they're sort of sequenced in there. Uh, and that'll make more sense in a second. But so you sequence those in there, you get that set up. You know, there's a whole, you know, it's not this many cards for a specific monster. You like, get get what you need. You, each one has its own little setup, but you're gonna read the story. Um, and what, what you know, it's an early evening at the inn at Four Rivers, and the place is crowded with humans, elves, and dozens more races all eating, drinking, singing, and shouting. Right? You're gonna like let, set up the stage. Something happens. I don't want to reveal. It gets you know goes on and on, but you're gonna start battling. So basically, everyone's sitting opposing the the boss, and there's adjacency. So you can assist people to your left, uh, or as I found out, uh, you can't assist. My first game as the cleric. The boss is actually sitting there between you, so if you're sitting neck butted up against the boss, you can't. You can only help the person to your left. Um, I think we got that right because we, we we checked. But so there's adjacency and positioning of your team. Think that through first. Don't just sit down. Um, and then you play a card from the boss, and they basically fall into different categories. They're either guards that will defend uh, the boss. Let's see if I can get one in particular. Uh, Where's that guy? Uh, in which case, it's in the boss's area, and each and uh, each and every turn, not round, this person will attack. It's really tough. So every time a player goes, guards will attack. You can get uh, you reveal a card, and uh, there's a icon at the top, and that's based on the monster's ability or the boss's ability. So there's always like an icon, so it's like hurts you, heals the boss, that kind of thing. 
and then they flip over a card that's either dedicated to everybody in the center or just gets placed in front of a single player. A card that's placed in front of a single player is blocking that player. That player can't do anything but deal with that card, but adjacent players can help. So there's this really nice adjacency mechanic that simply falls through. The other card you can get, or there's sometimes spells that just do damage, or like obstacles you can get like barricaded and you just have to deal with it to like join the group. So there's this fun idea of, there's the marketplace, it plays just like Hero Realms, but you're like dealing with things in front of you and you're assisting your players and, and it's very smart. Uh, once you get a certain number of masteries, uh, you will flip the boss to the meaner version and have to deal with the meaner version of the boss. So sort of like a countdown. Um, also, there's typically like a game end card that gets um, shuffled, shuffled through so that like your first round you play without it, but then there's a sort of an unpredictable end period. Just really smart, uh, pretty brutal. The boss, because the, the main, the guys up front can attack everybody and something's happening every turn, not every round, uh, it can be pretty brutal. The other big part of this is it is a sequence of many chapters. As you play through chapters and encounters, you get rewards. Some rewards are just elixirs that are just like good for anyone. Some rewards are treasures that are specifically for classes uh, or there's like sort of group treasures. And then there are skill points and you can actually start leveling up certain skills within your, uh, within your set as you go. So it very much has that deck, you know, between fights build up and tree branching that you can do as you're um, leveling up and building your characters. I didn't play all whatever uh, 15 chapters. But I will say the progression of the chapters, the narrative, it's fun. It's light. You know, you're only getting a couple paragraphs. But the way the bosses work, the way the cards work, the sense of atmosphere, I think it does it. Um, this is comparable to like full, bold, you know, big cooperative adventure games in terms of what it's trying to do. Um, I think that you gotta love Hero Realms. <laughs> you gotta love Deck Builders. It, it, it feels a little bit light on player interaction. The adjacency is really nice, the thought around it, but the game isn't really built with sort of cooperative play at its base. So I think that it works. Uh, it's just not gonna blow your mind. It's mostly like, hey, can you help me take this guy out? Hey, let's get that cooperative talk. Um, and a little bit of planning talk, but it's on the lighter side. It works though. I would say the biggest value too is like it's a, you're able to play Hero Realms and not not be competitive. Again, I didn't play those boss battles, so they may have been cooperative too. too. But uh, I enjoy it. I, I I'm uh, not always the case, but my intent is to actually play all the way through the campaign. I've been having. To, I mean, you got it's not it takes some time to get all the way through it, but but it's a lot of fun, lots of variety. So this is. The Rune of Thandar. Hey everybody, Edo here, and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff, but most importantly, play some great games. Thanks.